Yeah. Mark, Mark, I, uh, Mark. I, I have started that little game called Elden Ring. You a sicko? You a sicko now, Mark? Um, I'm slowly getting there. I mean, I've, I'd say I'm about 18 hours in, oh. uh, in the course of a week. So you did say you weren't showering earlier, so you could play more Elden Ring. More or less, yeah. I mean, look, I've just I've had nothing to do these these evenings. I literally I finished work at six o'clock on the dot, and I've I've been playing through to about eleven o'clock. Um, yeah, Elden Ring. It's it's interesting. Um, <laughs> no, no, it is. It's so many feelings yeah, and emotions going through game. the pen right now. <laughs> Here's the thing, because I've been thinking a lot about this fucking game this week and Live Alive, which we'll get to. Damn there are so many things that I I don't like about the game and how it sets certain <laughs> things up. But but here's the thing. There's kind of two sides to it. On one hand, so many of those things, the argument will be, yeah, but Mark, that's the point. It's a Souls game, and I'm aware yeah. of that. So it, they, there are so many times things is 90% of the satisfaction. If they weren't hard, it would be less satisfying. There were so many times you were in the chat this week where I was like, I just can't understand why the game does this. <laughs> and we're just all like, yep. yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But not the, exactly like I'm a seasoned soulsman, like, but I know that I know the gimmick. It is like truly part of the experience that the game is hostile toward you in it every really way is. it can be. It, it does hate you. And because the other thing as well, I was going to say is that like in terms of a game that gives you a big open world and it kind of gives you like that first sort of like, hey, here's a thing in the distance. Go over there. But I'm not going to tell you anything else. Like, hey, yeah, there's a lot of Breath of the Wild in Elden Ring. And I think Elden Ring is more kind of set out like lots of like mini uh, uh, Breath of the Wilds in some ways. But they're they're very similar. And so I'm, I'm aware as well that a lot of the complaints I could have about Elden Ring, well, those same things are happening in Breath of the Wild. And I absolutely love that game. Uh, and, you know, that's not to say as well, like with Breath of the Wild... There are lots in, of things in that game that want to kill you and will yeet you. And Lord knows a lot of those things happen to me and Dave saw them happen to me. <laughs> Imagine if on top of everything, Soulsborne games had weapon durability. Oh, oh wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Technically, Bloodborne kind of does. Your weapons do degrade and you have to repair them. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like, I'm conscious of this, but there is certainly a difference in terms of... You, you never really feel like Breath of the Wild hates you playing it in the way that Elden Ring does sometimes. And there also is, like, unless you're really going out of your way, you don't jump into, like, these really random spikes of difficulty in the way where, literally, like, within the fucking opening moments of the game and certain parts of the critical path, like, you know, the fucking Tree Sentinel is... I understand it's there to teach you, hey, this game... Th th this world hates you and things will kill you and you need to go off and find weapons and whatnot and come back to, to take this guy on and you're going to need your horse. So I can get that. It's it's rude, but whatever. It's a Souls game. The game in Final Fantasy you... XII does it better with a big old T-Rex in the very first area, mm. just saying. And the game like literally forces you to die. Like Even if you oh, kill, yeah. before you see the opening cutscene, even if you kill that boss, you cannot advance until you die. <laughs> so... Yeah, I mean, and yeah. that's like a kind of old, like video game design 101 yeah. sort of like... It's a, I, I often bring it up as like one of the first trophies you get uh, in Dark Souls 2 is the first time something kills you, you get a trophy that just co that's just called This is Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, but again, with like the, the kind of random difficulty spikes, because... Um, you know, I did the first boss uh, or like the first kind of mini dungeon that I did and that took up two hours and, you know, a good 40, 45 minutes of that was just me doing that first boss with, you know, kind of my low geared weapons. So and, and a everything. good 40 to 45 minutes was you trying to dodge roll past the fire. Oh, not knowing you can sprint and then getting mad at the I game for not telling you you can sprint. <laughs> exactly. The game does not fucking tell me you can sprint. So I didn't sprint. Um, you know, but I wouldn't have got through like the first, I probably wouldn't have got through that for the rest of that fucking stream if Sean didn't tell me, by the way, you can run. Just keep so, running into the fire for two straight uh, hours. I mean, at some point you just think, all right, I guess I'll, maybe I'll be able to iframe out of the way of this fucking fire. Uh, can but, I say that almost no video game moment of 2022 will match Jump and R2? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's another thing as well. But like, so I, I finally get to, to Stormville Castle and, okay, first of all, there's like the whole fucking getting up to, um, uh, Mar is Margaret, uh, Margaret, um, that whole section isn't too bad. It's Margaret! It's like, it's Margaret. he's kind of fighting an old woman. Oh, oh Margie. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm Margie. So that, that section's quite rough, but it's not too bad. And then obviously, you know, there is the fight with Margaret that is is meant to really kind of put you in your paces, is going to be that brick wall that you're going to have to overcome. And I imagine 
a lot of people kind of like the second level in Sifu. It's like, you know, either you're going to get past that or you're just going to stop playing there. And now, in fairness, by this point, I was using walkthroughs and I got powered up and I actually ended up doing Margit pretty quickly because I'm just like, I'm not going to play this entire game blindly. It's just not going to happen. Mr. And Souls over here. This. He's it's, an expert. It's not. Yeah. And it's not like for the majority of people who play it, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Garrett, but like part of the experience is that you are doing it with guides and with tips and things like that. Uh, apart from the the bravest of the brave and the hardcorest of the hardcore, nobody truly goes blind in a lot of these games. Yeah, uh, the people that like to smell their own farts, basically. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a small bit torn on that in that I'm like, if there's anything you don't understand, you don't order to go look it up. The game's your Which is the game is your ninety five percent of the things that I collect in this game. I don't know what they mean. I don't nope. understand what they're used for. Like, I'm sorry, the game does not tell you what Scarlet Rot is, unless obviously at some point you die to it. Yeah, but you like die. I pick something up and it says negate Scarlet Rot. I was like, well I don't know what the fuck this is for. That's game and design. yes, the way the game it's wants for Scarlet to teach Rot. You. Yeah, it tells you. The game teaches you that you die to it. But you know what? I didn't enjoy that. That's all I'm saying. But I will say there, there's Rot. people She's who a... like look at like what should my playstyle be or like how sh- how should I play the game? And I'm always like worked that one out for yourself because sure. yeah. I, I think everybody will approach these games differently like the jack run a hit the thing and run away is just as valid an approach to these games as running up and, and like killing it instantly I always insist yeah. people should find their own play style because the way you yeah. play that game will be very different from the way I play that game and that's the way it should be there, there are people who will live and die by the parry, and there are people never use it. who yeah, the, I, hard, the yeah, hardly I'm ever. Like, fuck the I parry! I'll, I'll roll yeah. around and hit things. I don't yeah. need to time shit. And and something I learned, I think it was particularly when I would talk to people about Bloodborne, is that every single person you meet is going to have a different opinion on how you should load out weapon wise. Yeah. It's whatever works for you. And you just yeah. find it. And it's through brute force, trial and error. And you'll eventually find the one thing. It's like, this works for me. And no matter what people tell you, it's like, is that wrong? It doesn't work. It shouldn't work. If it works for you, that's all that matters. Yeah. I pick samurai because samurais are cool. That was the only reason <laughs> I picked that class. I mean, I just, I have a giant fucking sword and I've got some claws that um, enact like blood loss. And I found that that was pretty useful against Godric. And I just got to the point where I was like, look, I will use the summon character and I'll use my wolves and I'll distract him for long enough that I can get enough swipes in to get like to the, the kind of second stage of the fight and then just hope to hell that I can roll out of the way enough. And for the most part, I've got the roll like technique down there. But the, the problem with the game, and it's not the problem with the game, it's the problem with me, is that if I need to roll, I won't just press roll once. I will just hammer circle like three or four times, which will then enact at least two or three rolls because, you know, the game kind of inputs every every input that you do. Yeah, and it's a game that is literally built on the idea of like deliberate movement. It's very, very You deliberate. need to make deliberate choices. And if you don't, yes. if you just flounder and squirm, you'll just get killed. Well, I don't think that's one of the like the frustrating charms to it is it, it is very about precision, but also you move in an unwieldy fashion. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it's about precision. But it's like it's, it's very giraffe on roller skates. Yeah, but a lot of those <laughs> boss fights, like there's no fucking precision to it. Is you just get in there and there kinda, is there really is like uh, the, the, sometimes there is. The, but sometimes the better you, you get, the more you do realize it's like oh, this sure. dude has a pattern, and I can exploit it. Oh no, I know they have patterns, but sometimes it does just turn into a cluster. The fuck. Oh like, yeah, and you'll you'll do the you desperate know? last de- the last uh, attempt at, at killing it, and you'll get yeah. hit, and you'll die, and you'll be like, which happened to me several times. It now. will happen to you more, yeah. and you, you will you will you will feel gutted, and it will punch you right in the gut, and you'll be like, if I just had like the smallest smidge of patience, I would kill the thing. But it's like, nope, one more hit and I can kill it. Rush in, oh, I'm dead. But like, so I I did um I finished up the the first legacy dungeon Stormville yesterday, and it's just you know you can spend a good like 10 12 hours just going around Limgrove and doing all like the mini dungeons and the mini bosses and blah 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 and then every now and again just kind of randomly run into a dragon as you do but then like you get to Stormville and I know that like from what I understand the legacy dungeons they play more like a an atypical Dark Souls game but for me you know going from kind of this big open world to this like insular area of just utter hell and like every fucking corner is like, all right, now there's this black knight that I, I, has taken me 15 attempts to figure out, oh, I need to get behind it and backstab it. And then, you know, by the time you get to the end, you have like the, that fucking courtyard section from the main gate up into like where the, the fog is for uh, um, 
uh, Godric. It's like it's it's completely insane. Like there is no way you can do that section by like going piecemeal bit by bit. Like the only way I could see that you can do that is you just have to fucking run, which yeah, I'm not doing. You sprint right through it. <laughs> you just sprint right through it, and then you know, like, and he, I, like I, it's, it's a it's a long held Dark Souls Bloodborne Elden Ring pro tip. There's most situations you can just sprint right through it, which I do a lot of the time. But the thing is with that. Um, I ran and I ran and I ran and then I went into like a corridor to uh, a doorway to the left which I feel like they put there deliberately because I went in there and there was a portrait but nothing else and I was like I'm fucking trapped in here now and lo and behold about seven archers started coming with their crossbows and I'm kind of slashing halfway through the door and then that fucking ogre comes in as well and I'm trapped to him in this tiny confined space I'm like well this is not exactly ideal for me or the heartbreaking thing when Barry was playing that he didn't realise there was a save point right outside the door of the boss so every time he tried to run through that and not get hit and not get hurt and be like half held lose some of his healing by the time he got to the boss it's like no the save point right there in the room next to it it's (laughs) interesting because I because you've got the right there where the the uh, save point is but i actually went left and i think there's like a, li- uh, a lift you got and then found a save point there mm. so I, I ended up managing like to get through there and find like a different save point but yeah you might you might see the uh, and again it's probably done deliberately you might see the the fog there and just think oh i guess i have to do this now after doing that fucking gauntlet which is you know there's some real dick moves they do and they're all completely deliberate yeah they, um, like midnight club probably doesn't actually have the record for most jump scares that's his castle in El front <laughs> <laughs> So I am enjoying it. I I can see myself sticking with it. I don't think I'll be able to do like eighteen hours a week on the current kind of uh, uh, kind of track record I'm going. But I'm definitely going to stick with it. Whether I fucking get to whatever you call completion by end of the year, maybe, maybe not. But at least I have more of a of an understanding for this now. When the whole point I wanted to do this obviously was come game of the year, I at least have some sort of idea of what I'm I'm talking about. But I'm actually at the point where it's like, no, I am I am enjoying this. Um, you know, I'm not very much into like Western RPGs and like MMOs and this is all as kind of deliberate in that sort of a, approach as you can certainly with like the kind of open world questy environment there's a lot of like MMO like DNA in there um, but then you do get like the bits of you know I'm kind of recalling Breath of the Wild with certain aspects of it as well and yeah like it, every now and again the, the game does something that just frustrates, frustrates me to all hell but like it's never done out of bad game design like I will say that there's no part of the game where I think there's anything there that I think is everything there is deliberate and if something is not being told to you that is a deliberate choice and I can bitch and I can scream and I moan but it's like you know it's still like it, that, that's the point of the game it is there to teach you in ways that aren't just signposting everything for you and yes like modern game design does very much do that so i can have the appreciation that it doesn't do that but it's just it's it's so like the game is so overwhelmingly large you know like i big. i I, I've done, I think, quite a lot of Lingrove now. And now I've gone down to uh, Sophia River, I think it's called. And that's like a whole nother fucking version of Lingrove, but underground now. And it's like, how fucking big is this game, for God's sake? Unfathomably, some might say. Um, but, like, with that, and now obviously this game's been out for a few months now. Um, so I don't know what's kind of come along in terms of patches and whatnot. But there hasn't been too much in the way of, like, you know, kind of things popping up in in the in the foreground um there's only one instance where just like suddenly a dragon appeared on a bridge from still quite far away but it was like it's not there and now it's there um so i've had a few kind of little texture pop-ups like that but for the most part you know it's just it is astounding uh just the way that this game runs and so seamlessly and like you know the the lift that takes you from limgrove down to the the river is it's kind of like a snake eater ladder climbing in terms of how long that goes on for and i'm presuming it's doing some sort of like loading in the background but that goes on longer than you would expect a fucking lift sort of uh, sequence to go on for in real time you but, are literally yeah. getting a lift to the underworld it takes it a while mark very much is the case yes so it's like, I, I i think the yeah. degree to which and this might sound gatekeepy to say but the degree to which these games are hard is slightly overstated like these games have a humongous wall at the beginning 
And that wall is really daunting and really scary and really difficult to climb. And the first time you play any of these games, you'll fall off that wall, you'll think the wall is mean and unfair and you'll never try and climb that wall again. But if you stick with it long enough and you do get over that very first hurdle in all of these games, you will basically understand the language of pretty much all of these games, maybe other than Sekiro, which I think is pretty different, but all of the Dark Souls, Bloodborne and Elden Ring games, that you can go and take what you learn from this and like demon souls will be much easier dark souls will be much easier bloodborne will be much easier there's a moment in all of them where you get it and uh, like for me it was bloodborne where i had the exact same experience where it's like the first area of that game is really mean and unfair and i hate it and it's the worst and i think that's one of my favorite games of all time like everyone has that moment with these games where it's like you either don't overcome the wall and you think it's the worst game in the history of existence which honestly is fair enough if you believe that and you either climb the wall and it's like god these games rock when you actually like, when you get them when they click in your brain it's like oh i understand this now and i mean honestly what you're telling me garrett is either you either you will not enjoy it or you'll develop stockholm syndrome yes and, you know <laughs> yes it's, yeah, whatever. you will appreciate the game being mean the, the dopamine mean hits the game gives you for overcoming the ways in which it is mean is enough to uh, put up with the ways in which it is mean <laughs> I uh I I feel slightly differently in that I I bounced off it. I still think it's a great game, but I just thought I don't have to do this. You don't. <laughs> you, you don't have to climb the wall. Climbing walls is hard I, and difficult, and there are things that will give you all of the joy and satisfaction of video games without the same amount of pain and suffering to put up with. Yeah, like I want to play Kirby. I think after this, maybe or it was maybe a month or so after, and I was like, ah. Oh, and I will say, just I can I can completely easy. understand why some people would say that this is their game of the year, even though I'm like, you know, a fucking 10 15 percent of the way in. I get it. I get it. It's just on the sheer scale of it, it's so you know, just kind of awe-consuming that it's like, yeah, I understand why. Yeah, when you think of, like, um, the production of this game and what this game is doing, it's just, like, yeah. it's really on a scale all of its uh, all its own. Like, uh, it, it, Absolutely. I, I have problems with the game. I don't love the legacy dungeons. I don't love some of the systems. But, on like, just on the whole, when you look at all the quests and stories and art and the size of the world and the, the satisfying nature of the combat and some of the boss fights and just everything that encompasses this game, it's still my game of the year, just just because of the sheer scale of it. What? Oh, the ambition. What is your favorite Soulsborne game? Oh, I'm a Bloodborne guy. It's still like yeah. that's still my favorite Souls game. I, I've mm-hmm. never finished any of the Dark Souls. I, I played them all. It's like I kind of bounce off them. I think it's like the world of Bloodborne in particular, and like the vibe of Bloodborne. God, that game is so mm-hmm. good. Yeah, I uh, I have been inspired by Mark and the impending game of the year to get back on the horse um, with it. I, I have nothing huge to report because I haven't progressed any further than I did in my original save. I started again just because I've completely forgotten how to play the game. Um, and I'm doing it more guided, kind of like Mark is this time. So I'm still in my first couple of hours. So it's mostly just running around, uh, unlocking sites of grace, running away from combat and getting some stuff to load myself out. Uh, got my turtle talisman and, and a few other bits like that um, to just to make things um, a bit easier when I finally get into the big fights. Um, so I think we'll, we'll both have some... Elden Ring status updates as we try to to guilt Jack into getting back on the horse as well. Uh, Look in the coming weeks. No, I can't. I can't play it. I'm just not good enough at it. Gotta do it, and, man. And then Cuphead and, in 2023. You know what? You know he doesn't have to do it, and I completely no, no. understand. No, Mark, he does. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he does. no, I don't no, want to, but I'm doing but, it. But, but he Mark, doesn't. He does. No. Um, uh, if the, I was a streamer, like if I was earning money from streams. I would play the game and mm. I would let everybody see how terrible there's, I was at it. 